The economy of Andhra Pradesh is one of the fastest growing economies in India, with growth outstripping that of the wider Indian economy in the past few years. The GSDP at constant 2011-12 prices for the year 2016-17 advance estimates is estimated at 5 rupees 47021 crores as against 4 rupees 90134 crores for 2015-16 first revised estimates indicating a growth of 11.61% Per capita income at current prices increased to 1 rupee, 22,376 from 1 rupee, 08, 163 in 2015 16, registering a growth of 13.14%. The economy is primarily dependent on agriculture, which directly and indirectly employs 62% of the population. The state has been ranked the best state in ease of doing business in the country by the World Bank. GSDP Topic In 2014-15 the state ranked 8th in GSDP at current prices which stood at 5200.3 billion rupees 72 billion dollars it recorded 12.03% growth compared to previous fiscal which was 4641.84 billion rupees 65 billion dollars while, at constant prices, the GSDP of the state for 2014-15 was 2,645.21 billion rupees $37 billion, compared to 2,467.24 billion rupees $34 billion of 2013-14. In 2012-13, the gross state domestic product GSDP of Andhra Pradesh at constant prices stood at 2,359.3 billion rupees $33 billion, and the gross state domestic product at current prices for the same fiscal year stood at 4193.91 billion rupees 58 billion dollars the per capita income of the state increased by 6.26% from 25959 rupees 360 dollars 2004 to 42186 rupees 590 dollars 2012 13 this is a chart of trend of gross state domestic product of andhra pradesh at market prices by ministry of statistics and program implementation with figures in billions of indian rupees source gsdp current prices Topic. Per capita income Topic. The per capita income figure gives a better idea of the standard of living of the people. In 2014-15, the state is ranked 18th with 90,517 in terms of GDP per capita at current prices. It recorded a growth of 11.20% compared to previous fiscal which was 81,397. Topic. Agriculture and livestock Topic. Agriculture has been the chief source of income and main occupation for the state with 60% of population engaged in agriculture and related activities. Rice is the major food crop and staple food of the state. Other important crops are sugarcane, cotton, mango, tobacco, maize, pulses etc. Four important rivers of India, the Godavari, Krishna, Penna, and Tungabhadra flow through the state, providing irrigation. Recently, crops used for vegetable oil production such as sunflower and peanuts have gained favor. There are many multi-state irrigation projects in development, including Godavari River Basin Irrigation Projects and Nagarjuna Sagar Dam. Andhra Pradesh was among the very few states in the country which went in for the green revolution in rice cultivation in the 1970s. Agricultural income in the state was 54.599 billion rupees, 760 million dollars at constant prices 2012-13. Given below is a table of 2015 national output share of select agricultural crops and allied segments in Andhra Pradesh based on 2011 prices. Topic: Aquaculture. Topic: Aquaculture such as cultivating fish, crustaceans, mollusks, shrimp production etc., are the major occupations of coastal areas. Andhra Pradesh is the largest producer of shrimp in the country, with 70% of the production from the state itself. The geographical location of the state allows marine fishing as well as inland fish production. 
Cyclones may do less damage to aquaculture than to crop production. Hence, farmers are getting attracted towards this industry. It grew from 3.46 billion rupees $48 million to 5.61 billion rupees $78 million. The Waterbase Limited is an aquaculture unit located at Neller. It encourages scientific shrimp farming. Most exported marine exports include vaname shrimp. Topic: <inaudible> Industries. Topic: The domestic product of industrial sector accounts for 507.45 billion rupees, 7.1 billion dollars. The state has also started to focus on the fields of information technology and biotechnology. Several major heavy industries are in operation in Visakhapatnam. The state still has to make its mark in high-tech engineering. Automobiles and auto components industry, spices, mines and minerals, textiles and apparels, IT industry, bulk drugs and pharmaceuticals, horticulture, poultry farming are the main industries in Andhra Pradesh. Industrial estates As of June 2013, the state had 39 Operational Special Economic Zones There are 272 industrial estates and industrial development areas in the state, covering an area of 14,700 hectares. The state government is in the process of developing industrial parks at different places, for specific groups of industries like Visakhapatnam Export Processing Zone. Food parks, one each in the two regions of coastal Andhra value-added rice products, dairy, horticultural, marine etc., and in Railzima region processing of vegetables, edible oils and export-oriented industry. Agri-export zones for the following produce are proposed at the places mentioned against them. Red Chili, Gunter District Mangoes, Krishna District Mango Pulp and Fresh Vegetables, Chittor Infrastructure Transportation Road transport remains the primary mode of transport in the state. The state is crisscrossed by 5,293.43 km of national highways and 15,406 km of state highways. The National Highway 16, which is a part of the Golden Quadrilateral passes through the state from north to south and is at the center of the road network. The national highways are developed and maintained by NHAI while the state highways and other roads are maintained by the Andhra Pradesh Road Development Corporation. The state has a road density of 32.82 km sq.km, higher than the national average of 30.45 km per square, km. Andhra Pradesh State Road Transport Corporation operates buses that form the primary mode of transport across the state. As of March 2017, there are 11,962 buses in operation. Andhra Pradesh has a total broad gauge railway route of 3,703.25 km and has no meter gauge railway. The rail density of the state is 16.59 per 1,000 km miles, compared to an all India average of 20. The Howrah Chennai main line, which runs through the state, is proposed to be upgraded into a high speed rail corridor through the Diamond Quadrilateral project of the Indian Railways. There are three A1 and 23 A category railway stations in the state. Visakhapatnam Railway Station has been declared the cleanest railway station in the country. The railway station of Shamilaguda was the first highest broad gauge railway station in the country. Three iconic bridges that span the river Godavari, the decommissioned old Godavari Bridge, the Godavari Bridge and the new Godavari Arch Bridge are widely regarded as architectural and engineering marvels of the state. There are two international airports in the state at Vishakapatnam and Vijayawada. There are domestic airports at Kadapa, Tirupati, Rajamundri and Puttaparthi. The government is planning to develop a new international airport at Bogapuram and two new domestic airports at Dagadarthi and Orvakalu to serve the growing needs of the state. Andhra Pradesh has the second longest coastline in the country and the longest coastline on the eastern coast. Vishakapatnam Port, a major port operated by the central government is the fifth busiest port in the country. 
Keeping in mind shift of trade towards India's eastern coast, the government is developing 14 non-major ports in the state, out of which five are operational. There is a huge scope for inland water transportation in the state through the network of river interlinking canals that are being developed. However, the current status of it is minimal. Topic. Communication Topic. The latest available statistics as in 2001 show that there were 3,003 telephone exchanges, 3,140,948 telephone connections, 118 telegraph offices excluding extension counters, telecom centers, and combined offices and 78,218 public telephones. As at December 2003, it is estimated that there are 1,550,000 cell phone subscribers in the state. The state has a share of 7% in all India cell phone subscribers. Exports Tentative estimates reveal that the total exports from AP during the year 2003–04 were to the tune of 15,306 crore rupees. The share of software was 30%, and that of food products was 20%. The value of exports during 2002-03 was 13614 crore rupees and that during 2001 was 12400 crore rupees. Topic: Resources. Topic: Gross state domestic product GSDP of industries was estimated at $137.3 billion for 2012-13. Andhra Pradesh is one of the storehouses of mineral resources with large deposits of chrysotile, mica asbestos, barites and limestone India. It accounts for about 93% of total production of barites in India. Andhra Pradesh has varied geological formations with a rich variety of industrial minerals and building stones. Other important minerals in the state are copper ore, manganese, mica, coal and limestone. Minerals like coal, oil and natural gas, barites, limestone, diamond, gold beach sand bauxite, ball clay fire clay, dolomite, dimensional stones etc. are still under tapped or untapped. The wide variety of minerals from the state is being traded or consumed in power, metals, alloys, cement, chemicals, paint, cosmetic, glass, ceramics, refractory, refinery and manufacture of various downstream industries. Minerals found in the state include limestone, reserves of oil and natural gas, manganese, asbestos, iron ore, ball clay, fire clay, gold diamonds, graphite, dolomite, quartz, tungsten, steatitic, feldspar, silica sand etc. It has about one-third of India's limestone reserves and is known for large exclusive deposits of barites and galaxy granite in the international market. Mining Mining is identified as one of the growth engines for the overall development of industry and infrastructure. The Tamalapal uranium mine in Andhra has confirmed 49,000 tons of ore and there are indications that it could hold reserves totaling three times its current size. 700 million tons of metal grade bauxite deposits in close proximity to Visakhapatnam port. The government of Andhra Pradesh is keen to utilize large deposits of KG basin, Krishna Godavari basin gas for power production to overcome the energy shortage, create employment opportunities and contribute to economic value and exports. Topic: Power. Topic: the state is a pioneer nationwide in hydroelectricity generation, encouraging private sector in power generation and efficient use of its coal-based thermal power stations. The state has become power surplus with excess power generation being exported to other states. Thermal natural gas and, coal -based and renewable power plants totaling to 21,000 MW are installed in the state by the year 2015. Thermal power plants with total capacity of 9,155 MW are situated in the state which includes Simhadri Super Thermal Power Plant 2000 of NTPC, Rayalasima Thermal Power Station 1050 MW, Sri Damodaram Sanjeevaya Thermal Power Station 1600 MW, Vijayawada Thermal Power Plant 1760 MW, etc. Heidel power plants are having a capacity of 1,798 megawatts. Topic: 
Tourism the state provides a budget for tourism, financially supporting various projects. The state has helped develop religious tourism via the State Tourism Department Some of the famous destinations are Tirumala, Suri Sailam, Sri Kalahasti, etc. Tirupati is one of the major source of income in the tourism segment because of the abode of Sri Venkateswara Lord Balaji. The temple is one of the richest in the world in terms of donations received. Other important sources of income come from the developing tourism centers at Visakhapatnam, Vijayawada. Economic timeline Economic changes during 1954–1983 this can be called the 29-year era of 12 centrally nominated chief ministers list of chief ministers of Andhra Pradesh. Excluding KASU Brahmananda Reddy term 7 years, average tenure of a chief minister was less than 2 years. The cumulative growth during this 30-year period for Indian economy is 311%, and for Andhra Pradesh it was 138%. Economic changes during the 1980s Topic. An academic study of Andhra's economic activity using official data collected by the state government of Andhra Pradesh, GOVT of India and World Bank reveal the following highlights. A domestic demand, supply-based economic policy instead of exports-oriented policies during this pre-liberalization period resulted in constant currency inflation-adjusted cumulative growth rates of 151% in seven years, one and a half times higher than the cumulative growth rate of the 30 years earlier, and 25% higher than the cumulative growth rates of 20 years that followed. Education reforms, local government empowerment, irrigation and electricity improvements, corruption controls of this period resulted in cumulative per capita income growth rates corrected to inflation and population growth 10 times the growth rates for the first 30 years and 3 times the rates of the 20 years that followed. On average a typical Andhra resident was 3,000% more productive in improving his, her economic condition than in the 30 years earlier and 450% more productive than the 20 years that followed. Distributional and social indicators rural education 51%, child labor 60%, malnutrition 81%, infant mortality 37%, female education 77% improved at rates that are yet to be repeated. Fiscal management indices deficit, foreign debt, debt servicing levels etc. were at their best levels compared to the era that followed when central government allowed higher deficit targets and allowed foreign borrowing directly from World Bank as a part of the liberalization regime. References, <references>